Going to the past exam question for the synoptic questions playlist. So if you do an OCR, these are the paper three questions. This one's mainly about enthalpy changes and there's a bit of redox on there as well. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So you can see I've already added a little bit of extra information here. So effectively, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction 3.2. And then we're going to use that and the given uh, delta H value for reaction 3.3 to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction 3.1, which we're told can't be determined directly. So in the experiment for 3.2, it's a calorimetry experiment, this one. So what they've done is they've used 1.24 grams of sodium oxide. I've got that from just the difference between those two masses and they've put some water in a cup and then added the sodium oxide. So the mass of the solution uh, whose temperature changed is the difference between those two values. So it's not 25 grams, it says about 25 cm cubed of water. So the mass of the solution is that many grams, 25.75. Delta T is obviously the difference in those two temperatures there. So that's 35 degrees C. So the first thing we need to do to get the delta H for 3.2 is do Q equals MC delta T. So the mass of the solution times specific heat capacity of the solution, told it's the same as water, times the delta T, 35. So you get that many joules, but we've got to put it into kilojoules. So 3.767 kilojoules. Next thing we do is work out how many moles of sodium oxide we used in the experiment. So mass over MR, 0 0.02 moles. And the last thing we do to get the delta H for 3.2 is do the Q in kilojoules divided by the moles minus, because it's exothermic, remember the temperature's gone up by 35 degrees C, so minus 188.36 kilojoules per mole. So moving on to the final bit where I've got to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction 3.1 using the value we've just calculated for 3.2 and the supplied value for 3.3. Now the way I'm going to do this is the way I was taught how to do these back in the 80s. So I'm not going to use a cycle. I'm going to basically create this equation from the two ones that we've been supplied and that we've got the enthalpy changes for. So if you look at what we need uh, as reactants in the equation that we want. So we've got a mole of sodium oxide. Well there it is there in equation 1. We also need two moles of um, hydrochloric acid. Well, it's also a reactant in equation two, but it's only one mole in that one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add equation one to two times equation two. So I'll just write out what that would give us. So that's given me this equation here, but we can cancel this down a little bit. So you can see that we've got two moles of NaOH on each side, so we'll get rid of those. And we've got a mole of H2 on the left and two on the right. So that'll go down to one mole of H2. So if we look at what we're left with, we've got sodium oxide plus two HCl makes two NaCl and one mole of H2O, which is the equation that we want. So if by doing that to the equations gets us the equation we want, well, we just need to do that with the ends that we change values as well. So we're doing exactly that for the enthalpy change values now for the two reactions. We get minus 303.56 kilojoules per mole as the enthalpy change for reaction 3.1. Part B now, so we've got to calculate two percentage uncertainty values, one for the um, temperature change and one for the mass reading, and decide which one has the greater percentage uncertainty. So there's the equation that we use to calculate that. So percentage uncertainty is the uncertainty value for the apparatus. So this and this divided by what was measured by the apparatus times 100. OK, so the error in the mass reading is the uncertainty value times 2 because it was measured by difference. Um, so the uncertainty times 2 divided by the mass measured 1.24 grams. Multiplied by 100 gives us 0.81%. Temperature, again, was measured by two values, an initial and a final temperature. So we double the uncertainty again, then divide by the amount measured, times 100, 0.57%.
So obviously the mass has got the greater percentage uncertainty. Moving on to part C, notice I've copied the equation out again for calculating percentage uncertainty. So we're not allowed to change the apparatus. So we can't use more accurate apparatus with a low uncertainty. So what we need to do is increase the amount measured, which will obviously drop the uncertainty if you're dividing by a bigger number. So what all we could say is just use a greater amount of sodium oxide. And the knock-on effect of that is it will create a larger temperature change, which again, when you do the temperature uncertainty, percentage uncertainty calculation, if you've got a larger temperature, again, you're dividing by a bigger number. So that will also um, decrease the percentage uncertainty. So moving on to part D now, the redox aspect of the question, we've got to give the systematic name for this. So systematic names include the oxidation number in Roman numerals. So this is effectively a sodium nitrate. Nitrogen and oxygen is nitrate, but we need to just work out the oxidation number of the nitrogen. So the oxidation number of the sodium is fixed at plus one. Group one elements all have um, plus one oxidation states. Oxygen in this is going to be minus two each. So we've got plus one with minus four. Well, to keep this thing neutral, the nitrogen needs to be plus three. So its name is sodium nitrate with a Roman three. So moving on to the oxidation number changes. So I've got an unbalanced equation here. So if we look at the sodium first, this sodium here, that's gone from oxidation number zero, this is an element, to plus one. So that's obviously the oxidation process because we've got an increase in oxidation number. Moving up the element reduced, so remember we've just worked out nitrogen's oxidation number is plus three in the sodium nitrate three. It's obviously gone to zero there because it's the element, so that's the substance reduced. So moving on to the final part of the question, we've got to construct the balanced equation for the reaction. I think it's a bit mean only awarding one mark for this, but there you go. So you'll notice I've got the unbalanced equation and I've got the change in oxidation number. So the sodium's gone up by one, the nitrogen's gone down by three. And the rule is the changes in oxidation number have to be equal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put a two in front of the NaNO2. So that now means that I've got two nitrogens to balance those two there. But that means that the knock-on effect of that is that the total decrease in oxidation number is now six because each nitrogen drops by three, but we've got two nitrogens, so we've got a total decrease of six in terms of oxidation number. So because of that, this is the um, increase in oxidation number. That means I need a six there. So now we've got the, the change in oxidation number balanced. So we've got a drop of six and an increase of six. And now all we need to do is just finish off balancing the equation. So we need a four in front of the Na2O. So thinking about it, you've got eight sodiums on the product side. So basically we're saying that six of them have changed their oxidation number by one each, whereas the two involved here haven't changed at all. 